Don't get the money and then go trick it off. That's that's the issue. People are so scared of debt because they're so used they're to... scared of themselves. Ooh. One of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs make is they focus on taxes during the wrong season. What people don't realize is that when you have money in a retirement account, mm -hmm. there is a way to access it tax and penalty free. Yeah. You just have to understand the right way to do it. Is it fair to know this much about money? It's the fourth quarter of the year. And how many of you all know that games are won in the fourth quarter? So just like games that went in the fourth quarter, your financial game can be won in the fourth quarter if you learn these four strategies to financial freedom. So during today's episode, we'll give you the four strategies to take your finances to the next level before the end of 2024. Welcome back to another episode of the Melanin Money Show. You know the vibes, man. We're still in New York, still getting it done. Yes, sir. Uh, and today, we're going to talk about finishing the year strong. Yeah, man, because a lot of people started off 2024 like this is going to be the year of more. 2024 yeah. going to be the year of more, man. Yeah, it's my time yeah. to get it. It's my time to make it. And then three quarters have now passed. Right. And they're in the same financial position they were at the beginning of the year. Maybe worse. Maybe worse. Right. And we're not here to pick on anybody. Yeah. yeah. Right? But we're here to make sure that you can finish the game strong. Yeah, because just because you're in the fourth quarter and you're down by 10, down by 20, down by 30, doesn't mean the game's over. Hey, right? Look, I've, I've seen people come back uh, with a whole lot less, yeah. right, and still win the game. Words so. of the Patriots beating the Atlanta Falcons. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I'd be sick about no, the Falcons. Yeah, no yeah. shade, no shade Atlanta. No shade Atlanta. But um we just don't want you to feel like the game is over. And so we, we came up with our core four strategies mm -hmm. that you can implement before the end of the year yep. that will still help you win your game of finances and get a step closer to financial freedom. Big facts. All right, so you want to kick us off? Yeah, I'll kick us off. So I think step number one. If you want to win the game financially, mm -hmm. is to make sure you have the right financial foundation. Okay. And what I mean by that is you want to make sure your entities are set up the right way. You want to make sure your investments are set up the right way. And you want to make sure your estate plan, aka your trust, is set up the right way okay. as well. So when it comes to how to set up your financial freedom foundation, I like to start with the revocable living trust. Okay. Because Everything is going to flow down to your revocable living trust because, mm -hmm. you know, with your estate planning, your, I would call it R R RVT, your, your revocable living trust, everything is going to flow down to that entity. And this is how you pass down generational wealth to the people you care about. So you have your revo revocable living trust that's going to own your other assets. It's going to, mm -hmm. it's going to own, it's going to be the beneficiary of your life insurance policy. Mm -hmm. It's going to own your investments. It's going to, it's going to have the ownership rights of your LLC because we want to make sure that when we pass away, nothing goes to probate court. We're able to pass down things to our heirs efficiently, right? right? And then the next part, at least for me, is making sure, especially if you're a business owner, which most of our listeners are, you want to make sure that you have your right financial structure for your entity. Mm -hmm. Should you be an LLC? Right. Should you be an S Corp? Should you be an S Corp? You, should you be a C Corp? Do you need a holding company that's going to own part of your other LLC? So you just want to make sure that you have the perfect financial structure for your situation. And the thing I like to, the thing I like to stress to everybody is there is no such thing as a perfect entity, but there is a such thing as a perfect entity structure for you depending on where you're at in business. So you need Thanks. to do the research to see, should I be an LLC? Should I be an S Corp? Should I be a C Corp? Do I need a holding company and then once you get that set up again you want to make sure all these assets are owned by your revocable living trust big facts it's, it's, it's so important to start with structure i mean people just be out here running and gunning yeah. you know what i'm saying now again there's, there's balance here right we're not saying that you need to have everything perfectly mapped out before you even figure out how you're gonna make money yeah right but we are saying that you want to at least think and start with the end in mind and understand how everything should be set up the right way so you're not having to unravel things you know, on the back end, right? A thousand percent. Um, the next thing is uh, understanding, right, how to access what you already have, right? A lot of times people say, I don't have money to grow and scale my business. I don't have money to buy real estate. I don't have money to do these things. And I say, well, how much money do you have invested in retirement? Oh, I got 200000 here. The, the old 401k, I got another 150. Yeah. I said, why you say you don't got nothing to invest? Well, man, that's locked up, man. I can't touch that. The 59 yeah, yeah, and a half, yeah. I'm going to get taxes. And then they told me I'm going to get a 10% penalty. Yeah. I said, who told you that? Yeah. I was like, they told me that. I was like, well, they they wrong. <laughs> um, and so now two things can be true, right? Like retirement vehicles are a great way to decrease your tax liability today, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, if you have a need to decrease your taxable income, we talk a lot about that, opening up retirement accounts for your business, et cetera. However, when we realize that retirement is just the age, um, excuse me, it's just a, it's just an, a number and not, a, not an age, mm. 
And we understand that, well, shoot, if all my money's locked up at 50, until 59 and a half, then I, I'm going to have to retire at 59 and a half or 65 if, if I don't have any other sources because I've stuffed all my money into <laughs> retirement account. Yeah. Balls on the stuff. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, hey, listen, I'm going to grow up one day, okay? It ain't going to be today. It ain't going to be today, though, right? Uh, I'm just glad it happened on one of our podcasts and not somebody else's. Yeah. Um, and so what people, what people don't realize is that when you have money in a retirement account, mm -hmm. right, there is a way to access it tax and penalty free. Yeah. You just have to understand the right way to do it. There's three to four different ways, but I'm gonna just give you one, yeah. right? So let's say that you worked for an employer in the past, you have a retirement account, you're like, man, it ain't doing nothing just like, and that's why I left my old employer because I, I ain't like it over there, but for some reason I left my money behind, mm -hmm. right? Now you've moved on mm -hmm. and you started your business, yeah. right? You say, you know what, what I'm gonna do now is I can set up my own retirement account as an as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna roll over that money from my prior. And, and how much does it cost to set up a, a retirement it's, account as it's an free. entrepreneur? It's I don't free. think people people know that. But people, uh, they, they think it's a big deal, and I gotta spend all this money to establish it. It's yeah. absolutely free, right? So you're gonna you're gonna move that money. When we say roll over, it just means it from moving from one account to the next account, mm -hmm. right? Tax and penalty free. That's the first thing, right? So now that money's under your control. Mm -hmm. First thing you re that you should know is that's going to give you more options and access, right? Most employers are going to give you very limited options, some target date funds, because it's like there's so many employees, they don't want to give you too many options. Yeah. Right? So I understand they why they do it. trust you exactly. with your own investment strategy. Here you go. Here's four. You, like, here's one if you're going to retire in 10 years, one if you're going to retire in 20, et cetera, right? Now you got more options, mm -hmm. right? But most importantly, if you're like, this retirement account is cool, but I need to grow my business, mm -hmm. right? With the solo 401k, you can borrow 50,000 or 50%, mm -hmm. whatever's less, right? And you can use that money for whatever you want to do. If you, whether you want to use that money to hire some employees, use that money to run ads, use that money to make some other investments, you can now have access to that money and it was not a taxable event and there was no penalty associated with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, you, there's just an agreement in place where you have to pay yourself back, um, but now you're paying yourself back versus somebody else, right? So you can literally access your money immediately mm -hmm. to be able to grow and scale your business, invest in real estate, hell, acquire another business if you wanted to, yeah. all while leveraging your retirement funds. Yeah, and I think it's such a powerful strategy because, um, one, this is my favorite way to become your own bank, yeah. right? I, you know, I, I, there's infinite banking or life insurance, but I'm like, if I already got money in a retirement account that I can't use the 59 and a half, right. why not roll that money from my old employer into my business's 401k plan, and I can take a loan from that money. I can use that money to jumpstart my business, mm -hmm. use the extra money from my business to pay off the loan, and even the interest that I'm paying on the loan, which is actually cheap interest compared mm -hmm. to most other interest rates, I'm paying interest back to myself over time, and you can do this over and over again. Once you pay the money back, you can use the loan again, and right. you can risk and repeat. And the way to properly execute the strategy, because first of all, you should not leave your money at old employers. Never should do that. Never should right. do that because um, a story of one of my clients um, uh, a couple years ago, she had about four hundred and twenty or some thousand dollars in a, in, a, in a former employer's retirement plan, and she didn't know how to roll it over, and she didn't really want to deal with it, so she left it there at her employer like five years ago. Mm -hmm. Her employer switched retirement plan providers. Mm -hmm. And they sent her, you know, an email notification, but she wasn't checking for it. Right, right, right. And so she checked her account, and it said zero. Wow. She probably freaked out. Freaked out, yeah. right? And it took her like ten days to figure out to, trace, to track, track it down and and and, and 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 locate her retirement funds. And the worst part about it is. It not only was it lost, but it was dramatically underperforming Jeez. because they just left it at the old. I mean, because they put, right. put it with a new employer with terrible investment. So, right. like, never ever leave a retirement account at your old employer. And when it comes to rolling it over, pro tip: go to the company that's receiving the money first. So, right. if you set up a solo four hundred one k at E Trade, you call E Trade and be like, "Yo, I got all this old money at this coke company. Mm -hmm. They have an entire department." That's job is to go get the money for you, right. put it in their account for you, so you don't have to deal with trying to call your own employer and trying to have somebody convince you to keep the money there. So the easiest way to do it is to start with the companies that will be getting the money and never, ever, ever, in my opinion, leave your money at the old employer because you can, you can lose it. Big facts. Yeah. What's up, family? Are you ready to make more in 2024? I'm talking make more money, pay less taxes, and get access to more capital? If so, 
I want you to join our 100% free masterclass where we're going to be teaching you all of these strategies so you can keep more money in your pocket and you can make your money make money for you. So if you want to be a part of this amazing free class, all you have to do is click the link below and save your spot. The problem is we only have 50 seats. So I will pause this episode, go register and come back to it after so that you can save your seat for this masterclass. Other than that, I'll see you inside the class. Let's get back to the episode. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's that's something that everybody needs to do. So here's your homework assignment. You know, we like to give you all tactical takeaways. Yeah. If right now, if you have retirement accounts, whether it's with a prior employer or whatever, you rolled it over in the past, log in, figure out what you got going on. Try to remember your login. Right. Try to remember your <laughs> try to remember your login. Right. And here's another bonus tip. If you have money to prior employer, you can't figure out where it is or can't figure out how to find it. Google Capitalize, not Capitalize, that's my firm, mm. but but you can you can Google them too. Uh, capitalize Retirement Retrieval. Google that and they will help you locate and identify where your retirement accounts are at, right? But figure out what you got going on, where it is, how much it's worth. And if it's anything doing anything less than 20% in 2024, yeah. you probably need to move it. You have a problem. Like literally yeah. you could have put your money in one index fund. One index fund. 21%. Yeah. Right. Because if your retirement, retirement account ain't doing that, you have a problem. Right. So that is your homework assignment. Locate, and, and if it's doing less than 20%, move that joint. Yeah. So I would say step number three is my favorite step. Um, is implementing tax saving strategies okay. during tax saving season. One of the biggest mistakes I see entrepreneurs make mm -hmm. is they focus on taxes during the wrong season, mm. right? There's tax saving season and there's tax paying season. Right. Tax paying season is January through April. And most people focus on taxes then, but like, bro, after the year ends in December, I can't go back in time. This is not, um, what's the movie called? Um, uh, not Hot Tub Time Machine. <laughs> is, I can't go back in time and go yeah. add tax strategies last year that you didn't do. So we need to be focused on tax saving season, which is the last six months of the year, especially mm -hmm. the last quarter of the year, and implement tax saving strategies that can minimize our taxes that will give us more money to start investing mm -hmm. at the top of next year. So two of my favorite and probably most easy to implement strategies tax strategies that, that entrepreneurs and business owners can take advantage of. Number one is the Augusta rule. Yep. And number two is probably accelerating depreciation on a vehicle or real estate property. Okay. So um, with the Augusta rule, guys, it's super simple. You're going to definitely do this in <laughs> Dallas on the mansion you're about to get yeah, yeah. before the end of the year, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make sure that happens. So here's the play, y'all. Um, the IRS says they legally allow us to rent out our primary residence to our business mm -hmm. for up to 14 days out the year. And our business gets to write off the, ex the rental expense as rent, mm -hmm. and we get to receive the money from the, from the uh, business tax-free. Right. There are very few tax codes in the IRS tax code that say, don't tell us how much money you're making. Mm. The Augusta rule is one of them was one of the few times they say don't you don't not only do you not have to pay taxes on this money we don't even want to know how much money you how much money you making so for instance if you want to charge your business a thousand dollars a day to rent out your primary residence that means you can charge your business fourteen thousand dollars your business get the four, gets a fourteen thousand dollar tax deduction you receive that fourteen thousand dollars tax free. And there's few times where you can receive money tax from the IRS and not have to report it as taxable income. This is one of them opportunities. Talk and twice. if you really want to get busy, you want to d take advantage of this strategy when your city has a lot going on. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we're in New York right now. The UN is here. So, hotel rates are 4x the normal rate that they're going to be. Right. So, if you was to run the Augusta rule in New York today, you would be able to go from charging your business $1,000 a night to charge your business $4,000 a night. Big fat. 4,000 times 14 days is $2,856,000, if I'm not mistaken. So you would get a $56,000 tax deduction in your business, and you would be able to receive that $56,000 tax-free, which is a whole lot of money. So if you, if, you own a, if you own your home and you own a business, you need to take advantage of the Augusta rule before the year's up. So you mean to tell me, not only can I rent out my home for 14 days, yep. right? 
receive that rental income personally, tax-free, get the tax deduction in the business. And if I have a home office, I still get to take advantage of a home office. So my home is just one big walk-in well, one big One big walk-in tax deduction, but the IRS does say you have to pick. You can't do both. You can't do both. But the, okay. you, know, you know what not a hack the system? So, not, so you can do the Augusta rule instead of doing the home office deduction, but guess what? If you itemize on your 1040, mm. you get to take the, the interest, of the, the mortgage interest okay. and the property taxes on Schedule okay. A of your 1040 mm. and then take Spicy. the Augusta rule on Schedule C of your tax. Hey, there, when, where, where there's a will, there's a way. Yes, I mean I'm gonna find both. <laughs> okay, we gonna find. We gonna find both, both. of them. All right. Both of them. So, uh, if I had to pick number four, right? We talked about accessing your uh, retirement accounts tax and penalty free. Um, one thing I would I would say is investing, right, in building wealth while leveraging it to acquire more investment, right? Because I think. One thing that every, talk about that, but dipping, brother. I'm talking about triple dipping. Triple dipping, right? I could go all the way up to four, four or five, but we might say that for another yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. You know I, I don't think they're ready for that yet. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So it is a very simple philosophy, right? Here's the idea: if we already understand that retirement has nothing to do with age, has everything to do with assets, right? Cool, we get that. Check that box. Now what we need to understand is that if we invest in a way that is going to outpace the market by following my little known strategy called the Burger King investment strategy. Right now, what that means is I can invest in the market, get a performance that's probably going to be better than I would ordinarily. And then on top of that, I can say, you know what, this is cool. This will probably get me there faster. But what if I identified a cash flow producing asset like real estate mm -hmm. that I wanted to acquire? Yep. Right. Then what I could say is, well, I could sell my investments. You know, people say buy low, sell high. But the problem with that is now my investment that was just, I just talked about is performing well. I've now sold it. Mm -hmm. I've now paid taxes on it. And now I'm using the money to buy a new investment. What if there's a world where I don't have to sell it and I can say, hey, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, N1 Finance, as you can see, I have this collateral on my account, i.e. This, these investments. Would you give me a line of credit based upon the value of my portfolio? Mm. Sure. Why wouldn't we? You run off on the plug, we're just going to take that portfolio. Right. No different than if you had a house, right? Mm. And you try to, and you try, to take, uh, try not to pay your loan back to the bank. So now you get a line of credit while your portfolio is still growing and thriving. And you can leverage that money to then go buy a piece of real estate, right? Now... Key word, I said cash flow producing real estate, mm -hmm. right? Because if the portfolio is designed to appreciate and grow, we want to leverage that to now go buy something that's going to produce cash flow. Mm -hmm. That's still going to appreciate, but we're focused on the cash flow. Then we get to take that cash flow and pay off whatever interest it costs us to borrow, right, against the value of our asset, and then reinvest that cash flow. So now I invested one time in my portfolio. Mm -hmm. I then borrowed against it to buy real estate, that's mm -hmm. two, then took the cash flow and reinvested into the same portfolio that's growing and thriving, and I didn't have to pay any taxes, mm -hmm. right, on all that money. And then you want to take a step further, now that you bought the real estate property. Oh, we're we going there. Yeah. We're going there. You can use the depreciation from the real estate property to lower your taxable income. Big fact. If you lower your taxable income, that means depending, depending on if you pay estimated taxes or your W-2 employee, you're going to get a tax refund back from the IRS. Mm -hmm. Then you take the tax refund, you invest in the portfolio, Ooh. and then you borrow against the portfolio, mm. and then you rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And I, and, I, and, I, and I didn't, I think I mentioned this, but if I didn't, don't forget, when you borrow against the portfolio, you're not selling your investment. So that's not a taxable event. Mm. And, and not only is it not a taxable event, you also get to deduct the loan interest, right, of any interest that you pay on that loan. Crazy. Say it's, it's, is it, is it, so... Is it fair to know this much about money? You know, you know. I think it was like in 2020 when that that um, reel was going around. It was like, what's something you feel like should be? It's so good it should be illegal to know. Yeah. This. This. You know what I'm saying? This is the way. This is the path. And obviously, you you don't want to be over leveraged. You want to do it the right way. And that's something that we break down and, and teach people. Um. But yeah, this is this is a cheat code. Yeah. Let's give them a bonus. I mean, I know we said four, but you cool if we give them a bonus? Yeah, um, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling generous. Feeling generous. Let's, yeah, let's, let's throw in a, a, a another bonus. Um, right. gave him the core four. Let's give him something else. Let's see. Let's see. You know what? You want to give on top of your head? I mean, yeah. I, you know what? I think that because we talked about uh, you know structure in the beginning, we talked about structuring your your investments and your business the right way. Mm -hmm. I think one of people's biggest drawback, even though I gave him a whole play on how to access the retirement accounts. Mm -hmm. well, well, George, I ain't got no retirement account. Okay, cool. All right. So you need capital to grow and scale your business. You need capital to invest. You need capital to do whatever, right? Cool. One of the things that you should do is once you set up your entity the right way and structure it the right way, now you can put yourself in position to get access to capital, mm -hmm. right? So that you don't have any excuse to grow and scale your business, yeah. right? Just the other day, 
I, I think we hit it with a couple of buttons, right? Not that we needed any money, yep. right? But like we just wanted to see. And what and what did they what did we get pre qualified for? We got pre qualified for I think it was like seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, seven hundred forty thousand. Seven hundred forty thousand. Seven hundred and forty thousand yeah. dollars, yep. right? That we could use to invest, that we can use to grow our business, whatever we want to do, mm -hmm. right? So there's no excuse. So I said that to say, when you think about your uh, what you're trying to accomplish, structure your business the right way, mm -hmm. right? Get your personal credit in order, mm -hmm. right? And then from there, start the process of getting access to capital so that you can use that money to accelerate the timeline of goals that you had that you were going to delay because you didn't think you had the money to do it. Yeah. Right. And I think the best way to start is whatever bank you decide to open your business bank account with, see what they see what credit cards they have for starting out business owners. Right. And I, I said on my business bank at Chase, they gave me a Chase Business Inc. credit card with twenty thousand dollars on it. Right. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Now every six months since I had that car, I request a credit line increase, right. which is no hit to my personal credit. Right. And now that car went from twenty thousand dollars to I think seventy five seventy seventy five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. And then now that I already got trust with the bank, I just asked for another credit card and I asked, mm -hmm. can they match that cap? Can they match that credit limit? And they come close to it. So now I have like one hundred and twenty five, one hundred fifty thousand dollars of access to credit with Chase. And then there's other banks like there's other. Um, lines of credit like Blue Vine, you yep. can use Headway Capital, you can use On Deck. Right. These are some 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 uh, business comp these business credit companies that will give you lines of credit right. that you can open and say, hey, I don't want to use it yet, right. but I, I I would rather just start building my relationship now. Right. And again, every six months, I have a reminder on my phone. Every six months, I go to these back to my lenders and say, hey. Can I get a credit line increase with no credit check? Facts. And when I tell you, I get hit up daily. I can show you the receipts. I get hit up every day. Like, hey, I know you got fun information in the past. Hey, and like, they are reaching out. They yeah. are literally throwing money at me. And the funny thing about it is like, when you don't need it is when they always offer you. Yep. So right, I'm, so then you should take it. To take it, yeah, right? exactly. You should take it yeah. when you don't need it because that's what my friends, what we call an opportunity fund. Yep. Right? And so I would say those are the core four plus, again, a bonus of just, Always making sure that you are good to the money so that you have the opportunity to be uh, to be able to leverage it for your business, to grow and scale, to invest. Like, don't get the money and then go trick it off. That's yeah. that's the issue. People are so scared of debt because they're so used they're to— They're scared of themselves. Ooh, talk about it. They're, yeah, yeah, people they are scared of debt. Yeah, they're, they're scared, scared of, them, of themselves. themselves. They don't trust themselves, yeah. right? It's like, it's, like, it's like you going into the donut shop, right? You don't trust yourself not to eat seven original glaze. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> So yeah, so like like the opportunity is here, right? For you to finish the year strong, right? Be able to crush it. And here's what you know. Here's what we should do, right? I think that we should host a virtual training, right, before the year is out, mm -hmm. so that we can give people an opportunity to go deeper on the. Because I mean, this is a long form, you know, podcast, but you know how we do, bro. Yeah. We like when we go in, we need days. Yeah. Right. Like we don't need hours. We need like literal days. Might maybe even need a whole week to really unpack these strategies. So I'm thinking we should invite them to a five-day virtual summit where we can like go deep on all the stuff that we talked about today. So like spend, spend a day going over each strategy in detail? Yeah. Because I, I do think each strategy has enough to unpack oh, for over, sure. you know, if we want to give a step-by-step -step, uh, blueprint on it. 100%. I mean, because even the retirement one I talked about, like there's like literally three or more three more ways, right, to be able to access your retirement funds tax and penalty-free, right? So I think we should. So are we, are we committed to this right now? I think we're committed to it right now. Okay. Well, yeah, look, y'all, y'all heard it here first. Um, so we're going to host a five days, five days, five, okay. A five day virtual training, virtual summit, yep. um, teaching you the five ways to reach financial freedom mm -hmm. before the end of 2024. Yeah. We want to teach them how to multiply their money, right? And okay. finish the year strong so that they can come alive in 2025. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come alive in 2025. <laughs> okay. So what we'll do is we'll make sure the link is ready by the time this episode airs so we can yep. have, it in, have it in the in the show notes. Yeah. Um, come spend five days with us, y'all. If, if this podcast was helpful, how much right. how, how much more helpful is it going to be to spend five days with us virtually and learn um, these step-by-step -step strategies? So yeah. And not to mention, not to mention, I know y'all already got some questions right now. Y'all y'all wish y'all probably in the comments right now. I heard you say this. What about this? During the five days, right, before we teach each day, we'll have an hour of Q&A where they can access whatever question they want on their current retirement account, their current tax issues, whatever it is they have, they can access questions directly. Me and you, right? Not I'm chat saying, GPT. I'm saying me, you throw me in there yeah, too. Yeah, like me that. and you. 
right? Not, not chat GPT, not our assistant. Like, ask us questions that you already have, right? And then if your head gets blown off and something new you want to know, then you can ask those questions too. So not only are we going to teach you what we know is going to be beneficial, but if there's some burning questions you got right now, you've been seeing something on Instagram, you want to know if it's true, if it's legit, if, you, if, if, if it makes sense for you, cool. We'll answer those questions too. Hour and Q of Q&A every day of the five-day virtual summit. On top of teaching y'all, teaching y'all for an hour that day too. All right. Well, I guess we committed now, bro. Hey, mean, like, hey, look, we locked in. Let's, <laughs> let's, 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 come on, man. Let's, yeah, yeah, no, it, 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 it'll be fun. It'll be fun. I think the people need this, especially in the last yeah. quarter of the year. So yeah. um, if you're interested in it, again, it's going to be in the show notes. We'll talk more about it. And hopefully we'll see you inside. Uh, if you like this episode, let us know in the comments below if you want us to do like more organic, like literally strategical ways on how we can help you get to the next level financially. Absolutely. Until the next one. Peace. Peace.